put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Iron Man movie review. Yeah, isn't this sweet? By the way, it opens up just like this. Two disc set. I recommend this, by the way. Yeah, I'm a dork. Don't worry, it only cost me a few bucks and bought it on sale. Anyway, movie review. Tony Stark is one of the leading weapons developers with his business, Stark Industries, doing multi-billion dollar business. And one day he finds himself captive in an enemy territory and he uses his well-honed genius to build a suit, an armor suit that will allow him to escape. And when he gets back, he decides that he wants to try to undo some of the damage that his weapons have done. I think eventually he will graduate to doing good outside of just, you know, fixing his own mistakes. This is an awesome, fun movie. You know, I'm gonna try to cover all the good, I'm gonna cover what little bad there is as well, but just first, you know, up front, if you haven't watched this movie yet, it's so entertaining. It is immensely energetic. Yeah, I feel I gotta mention the soundtrack I'm gonna butcher this guy's name, Ramit Jawadi, something like that. It has this sort of classic rock feel to it, and it just really fits with just this pumping, because a suit of armor that you can fly in, that's, that kicks ass, and that needs kick-ass score. And so, yeah, you know, in fact, the first, the opening moments of the film, you know, lead into, I think, it's back in black, you know, so you know you're on the right track. And so, yeah, the, the soundtrack, it, you know, basically you know that it's going to be about, you know, building the Iron Man suits. By the way, this movie made Iron Man fans out of a lot of people who barely knew the character existed. You know, I had read about him before this movie, but it was only, you know, actually read the comics, but it was only when watching this that I really fell in love with the character. The, you know, as as an origin story, you know, that, that can be a really thankless job. But this, it just, it approaches it in the exact right way, you know, it is that sort of fresh beginning to something, it is, you know, sort of brand new, and that can be really interesting. You just gotta not let yourself get bored with, you know, telling a story that is clearly for the time being set up, you know, and that is, you know, that is actually one of the negatives to the film. It is essentially a lot of setup, you know, but, yeah, so, so you have him building the, you know, the Iron Man suits, and the comic book readers know that there there's more than one version of the suit, and he goes through these different, you know, the Mark one and so on. Excuse me. And every time this movie introduces a suit of robotic armor, yeah, it establishes it and does something awesome with it. I mean, for every suit of armor in this film, you have a badass introduction to that suit of armor, you know, and 
you have just the entire process of Tony Stark building and fine-tuning this thing because, you know, flying and these sort of really advanced weapon systems, that's going to take some trial and error, you know, and that's part of the real fun of this. Tony Stark is a big kid, essentially. He might be a genius, he might be you know, ridiculously rich and, you know, charming, but he's a, he's a big kid and he's not going to take the proper precautions. So a lot of this is him just, you know, messing up and, you know, it just... Yeah, he, he he's lucky he doesn't get himself killed and it's just... Yeah, but but just watching him do all this, and again, you know, if you just say it like that, it might sound boring. He's, you know, building something and just working on it. You know, how is it fun to see someone working on something? Yeah, this really does a good job of that, you know. It, a lot of it is the humor, which I will get more into. But anyway, the suit can fly, you know, and... You know, whenever you do flight in films, you know, is well, a, a person who is flying, you know, or a creature who can fly. We're you know, not talking like jets or, you know, stuff like that, because, yeah. It just, I don't know, it, I think it tends to feel like you are removed from the situation, or at least, or, or maybe it's just that in other films, by comparison to this one, it does feel like... I, yes, honestly, even with the second movie having come out, this is the movie that best handles flying. It is the one where it is the most fun, the most, it just, you really feel like you're in there, in the suit, you know, flying through the air, and it just, and it's also that, he doesn't start out just flying perfectly, and he doesn't fly right away, you know? It it takes its time with, you know, setting up the suit and all that. And, you know, him going through the development stages. So, when he go gets into the air, it has it has been a while, and there has been a bunch of build-up to this moment, you know? And, yeah, it's, it's extremely immersive. And that's really the entire film. I told you about how he gets captured, Extremely immersive. I refuse, utterly refuse, to give away any spoilers for that in this video. I will be discussing it in the spoiler video, but it is just some fantastic scenes. You know, it just... I, I should talk a little bit about John Favreau's direction. This is pretty much the first thing he's done where people were really like, you know, this could really mean a lot. You know, I mean, he's done a couple of other films, I gotta say, I haven't particularly watched any of them. They just don't appeal to one like Elf and was he the one who did Sephora or some, something like that? It's yeah, but why why do I watch that? You know. But this, I don't think anyone was expecting him to pull it off as well as he did. And it's just, I mean, I would be impressed with this movie if it had been a seasoned director who was behind it. You know, it is just a fantastic piece of work. It's not just a an amazing debut. It's just an extraordinary film, you know. The energy throughout is just through the roof. I mean, this movie, with the credits, and you should watch through the credits, because the scene at the end of the credits is one of the greatest scenes after the end credits of any movie ever. With credits, this movie is just over two hours, you know. Without credits, it's 110 minutes, so... You know, that is, and again, it's an origin story, you know, you are really, you know, you got to make sure your audience is entertained. And throughout, I've, I've watched this movie like three or four times by now, and it still just entertains the crap out of me. You know, I am just watching intently every single second. The, you know, there's there's just constantly something happening in the in the story or with the characters, and the humor. The humor is really a huge part of it. There's this sort of running thing of just... I don't know, the... It's, it's basically this simple gag of a character says a line and, and like... 
maybe usually sort of in an assertive manner, and then boom, cut to the exact opposite. And it's just, it shouldn't be as funny as it is, but somehow it just, it is, you know, and yeah, it's amazing. And a lot of it, both the humor and the the energy of the film is what's his name the the lead actor you know the Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark and Iron Man it's just you know the, and this was his big comeback a comeback and it's actually quite fitting because the Tony Stark character is kind of a, a drunk and yeah so it's it's really fitting that he just and. I mean, when when I heard the casting, I I figured, yeah, exactly. Why did I, you know, yeah, of of course, it couldn't be more obvious. And he just makes that role his own. He is he is Tony Stark, and he is Iron Man, you know, and just the charm of Tony Stark. And and Tony Stark was always a highly charming character. He is a big time playboy, you know. <laughs> This actually has him, you know, when he gets on a plane in one scene, he actually, yeah, kind of gets, yeah, the three of the stewardesses are, yeah, I'm not going to give away, but just, yeah, he's a lucky guy. It just, the, the way he talks and the way he, you know, just the the whole the the mannerisms, everything about the character is just spot on. You know, very early on, you have this interview with this uh, reporter, and it's just this great banter back and forth. You know, and that's actually also a huge part of John Favreau let the actors improvise, and it creates this incredibly organic, very natural wit between, you know, Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark, Gwyneth Paltrow perfectly cast as well as Pepper Potts, his secretary, who just, you know, does everything for him. And there is this sort of little possible romance going on between them, but they, oh, man, either of them will completely admit that that's what's going on. It's just, you know, and Jeff Bridges, who is just excellent as Obadiah Stane, the business partner of Tony, you know, he he's also one of the like directors of the company, something like that. You know, and he's also just incredibly charming, you know. He has I don't know, he, it, there's like he's like your uncle or something. He's really really charming, you know. Really nice guy seeming, you know. And yeah, just the the way they you know, talk back and forth, you know, it's really, really clever, and, yeah, better than, uh, better than it would come out if it was just a script, you know, it doesn't feel manufactured at all. The action is also quite good, although it is arguably one of the areas where the film tends towards you know, being being lacking, and again, it is that aspect of it's it's an origin story, and this film actually doesn't really introduce its central villain for half the film, and admittedly, the sort of secret identity secret identity of the villain is a little obvious. You know, I'm not gonna say what it is here, but you can maybe kind of figure it out, you know, I, yeah. This is, was an excellent, you know, viewing experience in the theater, and if you watch it at home, which I guess, you know, by now you kind of have to, make sure, you know, turn out all the lights, and just, yeah, you know, watch it properly. Watch it on a big screen, you know, it deserves that, and it really has a massive impact when you watch it like that. The CGI is not only excellent and utterly seamless, but it blends seamlessly with the live-action elements. 
I can't tell where CGI, where, where live action ends and CGI begins. When I look at the suit, I mean, Spider-Man, you can tell that that suit's fake, you know. You, it, it looks like CGI from when he puts it on, you know. Basically, they made the real suit look fake and look like something a teenager could possibly have designed by himself like that. So that the CGI wouldn't be, you know, too big of a shock. With this movie, it just looked perfect. I, I literally can't tell when something is, you know, if, if someone told me, dude, Iron Man's real, they just, you know, followed the guy and filmed everything, I would believe it, because it looks that real. Now, the... I suppose that actually pretty much covers everything. The plot is pretty good and, you know, keeps... Yeah, it, it, there's, you know, consistent development. And this film does a really great job of sort of setting up things and then, you know, having them pay off later on. You know, yeah, I'm not going to give away any of it, but yeah. The acting is great all around, you know, and, excuse me, I'd say pretty much, excuse me, pretty much every role is well cast. Yeah, just, you know, an immensely fun film, you know, really energetic. Everyone can watch it. This is one of those PG-13 movies where it doesn't feel like it's PG-13. I have no idea how they managed to cover Tony Stark's hard-drinking playboy life in a PG-13, you know, and deservedly so, movie, and not make it feel like it's, you know, holding back. You know, nothing feels like there should, like it should have gone further than it does, you know. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.